Hello, I am a digital artist, except sometimes I'm not, and in today's video, I will be creating a fan art for my favorite fantasy book series. This fucking sucks. Or at least I will be trying. From idea, to sketch, to outline and coloring and rendering, I'm going to attempt to push my artistic skills to their limit. But first, let's do a quick overview of what fantasy series I'm even talking about, why I love it so much, and what I will be drawing from that series. We will get to that in one second. First, we're going to go over the history and lore of me, Faceman. Hello, by the way, welcome to the channel. My name is Faceman. Actually, it's very dark in here. One sec. So do not worry, we're not gonna do a deep dive into my reading history, but I just wanna quickly go over um, why this fantasy series that I'm gonna cover in a second means so much to me. I think I had a normal Canadian childhood experience when it comes to reading. I did not. Once I got to high school, my interest in reading actually did peak. However, there was an unfortunate opinion that I formed, and that was that fiction books were a waste of time. The realization of the value of fiction novels didn't dawn on me until just the last year or so. There is an insight into world building and uh, the creative mechanisms that authors use. So I did a little bit of research, looked around on the internet, and I came across a wonderful series known as Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. And I gotta be honest, this series really has changed my life. I'm probably more mad than you are that all three of my copies of this trilogy are from different publishers. I really hate that it's three different styles. It haunts me. Anyways, the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson really did open me up like a beautiful flesh flower. <laughs> I'm so sorry. If you are in the same position that I was and you don't read much or maybe you only read nonfiction, I highly recommend starting with uh, the Mistborn trilogy. I'm very excited for my own personal reading adventure and I think a lot of it is owed to this wonderful series so I wanted to show my appreciation and create a fan art. So you may be wondering, okay, cool, what are you making from the Mistborn universe? I always do weird and creepy stuff and there's no shortage of that in this fantasy world but I think one does stand above the rest that is the Steel Inquisitors. All you need to know if you're completely unfamiliar with the Mistborn world is they are motherfuckers. They will chop a dude's head clean off with their massive axe and then do a backflip and emote on the body. Anatomy is not my strong suit, and obviously this is a humanoid figure, so I'm gonna have to use anatomy. Let's see what we can do. Transition. So it's been a few days, but I've finally completed the uh, sketching portion of this fan art. But there are a few things I wanted to discuss in the process of sketching. And the first one is, yeah, it's been a few days. I'm still very slow and clunky at getting my ideas across through art. Um, if you watched my 2024 goals video, one of those goals was to complete things quicker, but I'm only going to get that if I keep practicing. Secondly, I wanted to touch on the fact that I started this in a physical sketchbook, which is a completely different process for me. I'm a very big uh, digital guy. It's where I'm most comfortable. But again, going back to my goals for the year, I want to fill a sketchbook for one thing, but two, I just need to become more comfortable with more mediums. The third mental note that I made while going through this sketching process was the fact that I actually used reference this time, which is a big step for me personally as an artist. It's not something I normally do for my art, but it is so, so foundational and so critical. You know, that included going through some practices of making sure I was familiar with how the head looks at different angles before really getting started, taking pictures of myself in different angles uh, that I needed once we were further along in the sketching process, and then also just pulling up references. So you have seen it behind me this whole time, what the sketch looks like, but I'm also gonna you know, put it up in post so you guys can get a closer look. So in terms of the details of this fan art when it comes to the actual Inquisitor, I'm not gonna get too, too into the specifics because I don't wanna spoil anything, but if you're unfamiliar, with Inquisitors, they have these massive metal spikes that are jammed through different parts of their bodies. I'm not gonna explain why. The weapon of choice is this massive ax that is made out of black glass, so it cannot be manipulated by other Allomancers who can control metal in this universe. And finally, they have almost runic tattoos around their eyes um, from when they were Obligators, which is 
another whole thing in the Mistborn universe, which I won't get into. I'm excited to get this piece moving along. Let's get into it. Chicka bow. Alright, with that we have the outlines and the base colors done. I'm really happy with how this is coming together. I've made a couple small changes as we went through the outlines. I refined some things, moved the position of the axe to kind of get it a better composition, and I'm also scared that this camera angle is showing my thinning hair, so let's get out of it as soon as possible. We're moving on to the shadows and lighting of this piece, which is one of my favorite parts of the art process. You can kind of sculpt and bring dimensionality to a piece so uh, let's get into it and let's see where this goes. It is finally done. We have completed this fan art for the Mistborn Fantasy series. I'm pretty happy with how this piece has come together, but like a lot of the art I do on this channel, I kind of want to do a post-mortem because this channel is more than just me making art. It's me hopefully getting better and taking you along on that journey and maybe you learn some things well, I learned some things. So let's start with the positives. Let's start with the pros of this art piece. Number one, I think this is my best anatomy I've ever done. I properly used reference and got a really good result out of everything. I think I veered to a more realistic style and the face as well I think turned out very well if you compare it to stuff that I did just about a year ago. Another pro in this art piece that I personally am really proud of is the rendering style. I actually thought I was going to approach this art piece similarly to, you know, most of my previous art, which is a comic book inspired, cell shaded almost look. I don't really know why I decided to do something a bit different on this piece, but I'm really happy with how it came out. And then the final positive point I wanted to touch on when it comes to this artwork is the fact that I'm continuing to experiment. I'm trying new things. We got this you know, big saturated bold background color, which is not something I normally do. We have text in there, which again is not something I normally do. So that's most of the positives that I took away from this art piece. In terms of specific actionable pieces that I think I did well and that I learned from, I think those were the big ones. And now we can move on to the sad part of the video where we talk about the cons. So the one big con of this art piece that continues to haunt me and this YouTube channel in general is the fact that, oh, this piece took forever again. The only thing that I can personally do about this issue is just stick to my habits, put in the hours every day, put in the practice every day, and slowly but surely things will start to come together. All right, Pogo is gonna join us for the remainder of this video, or at least for a couple minutes. So beyond that obvious con that I think extends through a lot of my artwork, there were a few specific ones in the artistic process that I wanted to mention. One is that I think I relied on motion blur a little bit too much. You see it throughout the art piece because I really wanted to sell the aspect of him like pulling forward and, and having motion. So bringing that feeling of movement into my art is definitely something that I need to work on more and the actionable thing I can do to address that is probably some more figure studies, some more motion studies, um, lines of action. These kind of practices get you more comfortable with things like emphasis and anticipation which really helps sell the idea of movement. And the final note or con on this specific art piece was that I did struggle with finding the colors. I think I actually did succeed in reaching where I wanted to on this specific piece in terms of the, the values and how everything reads, but it took me a while to uh, find my footing. I was changing colors a lot, playing with how dark shadows should be, where the lights should be, and uh, it just added a lot of extra 
overhead and a lot of extra work. So to wrap this whole thing up in a nice little bow, I think I'm very, very happy with how this piece came together. I am glad that I was able to convey my appreciation for the Mistborn trilogy and series and for Brandon Sanderson in this artwork. And if you like Mistborn yourself, I hope that you uh, got something from this artwork and this whole process. And if you have not read Mistborn, I do recommend it if you're interested in getting into fantasy or if you're interested in fantasy already and you're looking for some cool worlds to explore, some cool magic systems to explore, it's all there. I could go on forever about my appreciation for the Mistborn trilogy, but we have done enough in this video. So let's go on to the final points. I think I might try and make this a print. Um, now there is a little bit of muddy waters when you're printing something that is already copywritten, you know, fan arts and stuff. So I need to look into it a little bit further. So a small part of why this video took a little bit longer than normal was I was actually building a website on Squarespace. I'm probably the only YouTuber ever to not be sponsored by them and build a website with them, but it actually did work out pretty well. And it includes my portfolio, my own personal shop, uh, links to all my socials, more info on me if you want to get in contact or just learn a little bit more. If you do like this artwork and you are interested in a print, let me know down below and maybe I'll do some research and see if it's something I can viably do. And if I do, it will be going to the Faceman Art Shop. I think that's going to kind of wrap up the video. I had a huge blast doing this. I do want to thank you very much for tuning in. If you haven't already, consider liking and subscribing. Uh, it really does help me out a lot. All my socials linked down below. Thank you to all the music and artists that contributed to this video. I think that's going to do it. Stay a stranger. Say my friend. Stay